And this video will go from this to this. Okay, so my magnetron has gone out on this microwave and I was going to do a video on how to replace the magnetron, but magnetron for this one is 150 to 200 bucks. So I'm going to go ahead and replace it and I might decide later to go ahead and do a video for the magnetron for this one and then give the microwave away, donate it or something. But uh, for now, I'm just going to swap it out. So hopefully this goes as planned which I don't have much of a plan. So the first thing I did is put a blanket down over the stove here. I got a glass top stove, so hopefully that'll protect it from me doing something stupid. Next, I'll unplug it, of course. And I'll probably do this off camera just because it's awkward up here, but, uh, ah, hey, I'm going Somewhat get this done here. Well, got the power cord ready to come out, and then these screws got to come out. There's one, there's the other. And I believe what will happen then is that the microwave will tilt forward and kind of unhinge out. Okay, so. Moving that. And then I'll go. So I'm not 100% sure what to expect here when these come loose. So I am attempting to support it while loosening them. and just kind of walking them out. Probably a good idea to have two people doing this, uh, but I do not. Okay, there's that one. Okay, now it's coming down. So I'm gonna set that back in there. And reset the camera. Okay, so just gonna unpackage this while the kids scream. Got the plastic move, move cardboard. Two or more people to install, so I'll do the right thing and probably do it myself. We'll see. So it looks like you line this up against the rear wall on the upper part of the cabinet, like so, and use that to drill out your to drill out your main holes here. Like so. I do not have a roof vent, so I gave you roof venting insulation. Uh, this ought to be vented, recirculated.
It's kind of screws I'm pulling out of here. Crazy. And some of these. Look, good old Molly bolts. <sighs> Sheet rock's the only thing holding that thing in. Measured 15 and 5 eighths down to this point right here. Drew a line across it, which looks to be level with that right there. Uh, I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the bracket on. My stud, unfortunately, is right in the center. Um, so that's gonna be a problem. So anyway, I'm gonna hang it from the center, then put a level on it, level it out. Um, and then I'll have to put in the, the extra holes this says to line it up again 15 and 5 eighths from the upper of the cabinet bottom i actually dropped it down a little bit because of this lip right here um and we'll see how it works out for me i guess so uh 15 and 5 eighths down to the top line okay so now you need to find out where the studs are at i got a very inexpensive stud finder here but it seems to work okay so go along here. And it says there's one right here and the previous person marked it. So that's good. And of course, stud should be on 16, which this right here is marked. This is not pointing out. Man, it says there's one right there. So that's just the center line. Did that to hold it there. Put this on here. Get that leveled up. Hopefully this will get into the stud. Well, I was gonna hang this up here real quick, give it a test fit for the height, and as luck would have it, missed it by that much on the width. So, I'm gonna have to trim this back just a little bit. The uh, cabinets themselves are far enough back in, it's just a trim. Uh, just need to trim that back. What do you think, oscillating tool? Is that the easiest way to do that? Okay, so I need to trim this down a little bit. So I'm going to try my orbital tool. And... Tape this off. I've already taped the other side off. Like so. I don't know. What do you think? Bad idea? Good idea? I think I can do it like that. Hi. You okay, sweetie? <laughs> Doesn't hurt your ears. Doesn't hurt your ears.
Okay, so next step is to put this on. And it has to go up from underneath the cabinet, unfortunately. Will not fit up underneath here easily. Uh, not in my situation. So I'm gonna try to lay it up here, but these are made to go up from the bottom. So what I did, so I held this up to the light and marked it where everything needs to go. So, oh, over here, and marked it where it needs to go. So now I can just simply lay it on top, which is super easy to do this way. Don't know why they didn't give you an option of doing that, but they didn't. See how easy that is? Take that down. So now one problem you may have is getting your drill in here. Mine with the 3 8 doesn't fit so well. So what I'm gonna do is just go with the smaller bit, punch in the holes, and then come up from the bottom and drill it where I have more room. All right, so. So now I have this setting up here and have it marked. Just had to find center line, which was pretty easy, you know. It's not laying quite as flat as I would like. But anyway, there we go. Hopefully I can get close, close enough. First hole. Last one will be for the cord. There we go, now I've got pilot holes. And I can do it from underneath. Okay, for the two front ones, it says 3 8 but I'm gonna start with 5 16 or You can always make it bigger, right? and a half bit. I use a forcer, you can use a paddle or hole saw, whatever. Okay, so I did a test fit off camera to make sure that I had the sides where I need them and they're, they're fine. And I just use regular sheetrock screws here to hold this in for the temporary fit. So now I'm gonna go ahead and put the lag bolts in. This is a 11 millimeter, by the way. So, next up. I 
gonna let it loose for now. Lag bolt order. I hope I didn't. Lag bolt. Okay, next I need to do the modifications to the oven for the vent hood, depending on your model. By the way, this is a Whirlpool. Um, when I purchased it from a big blue box place, they didn't have a name on it. So it was a special for their, for them only. So I guess maybe they weren't allowed to say that it's Whirlpool. But all the instructions say Whirlpool on them. So if you're going to set this up for either wall or roof, then this opens up, like I just showed you, there's a couple of screws on here, you pull the motor out and then you adjust it whichever way. Or if you just do recirculating, which is going to be my case, you don't need to do any of that. And if you do uh, wall venting, you'll need to do this additional step for the dampener too. But again, mine's just going to re recirculate, so all I got to do is... Hopefully put it up there and bolt it in. Okay, next I need to actually put the, uh, well, mount it. So, have the bolts and washers ready to go in. This is recommended to have two people do it. So, I'm going to do the right thing and try it by myself. Yet. All right, so first you got to catch the back onto those hooks right there and then just hinge it up. started. I'm going with that.
There's the diverter if it goes into the wall assembly, but mine does not. Okay, next we need to put the filter in, which goes in right up here. Let's see if I can out the camera on something to make it useful. Okay. Back in first and then just kind of slide it in. Like so. There we go. Got the tray put in. I think I showed that. Oh, these two pieces right here got to be removed. You know, I know because it says remove this paper before using. So I'll go ahead and pull that one off. Now, before I go any further, I'm going to pick up my mess here. Then I come back and uh, program it, throw some water in it or something, and test it. Okay, now let's see if we figure out how to set the time on it, right? Cook, 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 cook. Cook, cook, timer, clock. 310. Sweet, first time. Yeah. Vent fan. Works. Light. Light's got two settings on it. Uh, now for the obligatory water test, I guess. Previous time to beat was one minute. So don't do that. My old microwave, if you just hit one, it would do a minute automatically, two, two minutes, whatever. This one apparently does not, but you can do that in 30 seconds. Well, that ain't looking too cool. Well, missed this in the instructions. Good thing I was watching the turntable wasn't turning, so might want to take the tape off. Ah. Hopefully it'll spin around instead of going like that now. Start. There we go. No. Yeah, it does. It's going. There we go. Ow, 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 ow. Yeah, it's hot. I'm gonna have to stick my finger in there. It's hot. Ah! All right, there you go. Guess I'll have to run it through uh, all the different paces and check it out, but uh, ultra cheap. Got it for 230 bucks. And uh, got all the stuff I need. I don't need a whole lot in the microwave. Just warm up baby bottles and occasional warm up of food or whatever. So there you go. Oh, and it's got the vent. I'm happy. It's a Whirlpool. I, I think I mentioned that previously, but I did notice in the documentation this is a Whirlpool. Uh, I'll put a link to it down there in the description to the Lowe's version of it. And I'll link the tools that I used. Uh, I'll find a whole saw for you. I link to the Forstner bit. I did get that off of Amazon. Uh, what else special tools? Maybe Ruby doesn't want me to. So yeah, I'll put a, I'll put a link in the uh, description down there for the tools that I used. Whole uh, Forstner bit is what I actually used. A whole saw is what I probably would have preferred. So. Rube says hi. <laughs> and uh, anyway, there you go. I'm happy with it so far. It was pretty easy install. Other than the fact, my cabinet was just a little bit off. Yeah. I had to shave that down some. It was, heck, it was, what, a sixteenth of an inch off? Um, now it's up there. <laughs> yeah, anyway, hey, anyway, there you go. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video if you did please select like down there and subscribe to my channel if you didn't like it well subscribe to the channel maybe you like the next one thank you for watching
and I just hung it upside down. Good job.